Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a subcompact SUV from Honda, the 2019 HRV 1.8 liter RS Navi CVT, and a compact SUV from Toyota, the 2019 RAV4 2.5 LTD. We'll also have a glimpse of some of the latest automobile models and concept cars from around the world. This week, we had the 2020 Hyundai Elantra and the 2019 Fiat 500 Star. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two mid-sized SUVs, the 2018 Isuzu Mu X RZ4e and the 2018 Nissan Terra. Together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have our special feature on Speed Lab. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! Now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Every time I'm on the road, I can also expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! Now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Honda. For this car review, we have a nameplate that takes pride in its design and performance. It's none other than the Honda HRV. Find out more about it here. We have here RS Navi variant. The HRV RS Navi is a refreshed model that has gone through changes and improvements here and there. However, it retains the powertrain of its predecessor. It is still powered by a 1.8 liter SOHC IV Tech engine that is capable of producing 140 horsepower and 172 newton meters of torque. These engine figures are made into a continuously variable transmission with Honda's Earth Dreams technology, which sends all power to front wheels. For the suspension, the HRV uses McPherson at the front and axle type at the rear. This setup makes for a quieter cabin when traveling on the road. It's time to check out the exterior and interior of the HRV. As mentioned, this model is a facelift, that's why anyone can spot some changes, albeit rather subtle and not that obvious. Let's start with the fact that the design of the new HRV now looks more like a Honda car compared to its predecessor. The front fascia features a bolder and wider U-shaped grille, topped with an iconic honeycomb pattern. Meanwhile, the LED daytime running lights and headlamps, as well as the taillights, are framed with revised bumpers that come in glossy black accents, giving more emphasis on the sporty and edgy look that Honda is aiming with the new HRV. Also, the character lines wrapped around the body of the car have always been there, although the entirety of it looks more polished now. Another thing that highlights the exterior of the HRV is the 17x7 sport black alloy wheels that make it more of a sight to behold on the road.
inside there are not many changes as it mostly looks like the old model. However, one thing that's worth noting about the interior of the HRV is the simple and straightforward yet strong looking dashboard. It looks neat, plus the important areas are highlighted by these piano black plastic inserts which are new for the HRV. The control buttons as well as the high deck console mainly prioritizes convenience. More on this later on. Meanwhile, Honda improved the seats of the car as well, made them more comfortable and cozy thanks to the leather material used. The front seats come with manual with seat height adjuster. While the rear seats are reclining, 60-40 split type. Speaking of the rear seats, the HRV has been known to be a car that is generous when it comes to space as it can accommodate those who have been blessed in the height department with no problem at all. It's actually a good thing that Honda didn't change this aspect. Let's check out the infotainment system of the HRV. It comes with a Kenwood 7-inch touchscreen infotainment with navigation. It is available in Bluetooth, USB, built-in Wi-Fi, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto connectivity. Many have found it impressive, while there are some who say that the car maker could improve it next time, especially with regard to the placing and availability of some control buttons. More technology features. The HRV comes with a number of it that cater to the convenience of the driver. It covers a telescopic steering wheel and brake hold function. Moreover, fortunately, the RS variant comes with a rear view camera that helps with parking. The HRV is also equipped with reliable safety features such as six airbags, anti lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, ISOFIX, immobilizer, and vehicle stability assist, among others. That was the Honda HRV, one of the most sought after cars of this generation, our featured vehicle in this car review. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions, the WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph or visit Autoplus Sports Zentrium located along EDSA, across White Plains. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Welcome back to Auto Focus. And now we have the latest auto industry news. Toyota Motor Philippines flew members of the motoring media all the way to Palawan for the 15th staging of the Toyota Road Trek. Toyota Road Trek is uh, one of Toyota's legacy in terms of making our media friends experience our models in a fun and adventurous way. It's not a typical test drive event. It's something that blends in memorable experience for media friends. During the first day of the much-awaited road trek, Toyota and the team drove around Puerto Princesa up to the Toyota dealership in the area. The group had several games and activities in between the drive, and then ended the day with some relaxation in the beautiful Apulit Island. We are always looking for the uh, best place to give a chance to the media people for the test drive. 
Then in the Palawan, there is a good long distance road from Puerto Princesa to the resort areas. Then, as you know, many, many good resort is around, so uh, it's the best place for the uh, media people to try the, uh, everything our vehicles. Moreover, aside from the fun activities and the tour around the island, Toyota brought more excitement with the introduction of the new Avanza during the road trek. The Avanza is like a uh, road trip car. People would use it to uh, load people and a lot of stuff and go driving and have fun. So I think this event is a perfect venue for us to introduce a car that you can actually use on road trips and have fun with friends or families because of the size and because of the, I mean, the features of the car. We have a lot of improvement exterior-wise. We have the new fascia or the new face of the Avanza. It also carries a split-type LED lamp. The rear is also new. The look of the rear is new. For interior, there is the redesigned dashboard. It carries new infotainment. So it makes it more advanced in terms of features and to make it more fun for the people driving or riding the car. We just introduced the new Avanza. We're very happy to note that we have sold over 100,000 units since its introduction. And we're the second country to introduce this in Southeast Asia. In addition, for this year's road trek, Theodore brought its models that have not been tested and tried by members of the motoring media. We offer the media people for their test drive, like all the series from the uh, top end to the SUV or MPV, many variations, such as the uh, Camry, of course, Avanza, Innova, Fortuna, Bios, of course, yeah. Toyota says they have a lot in store for their customers, from quality products to exciting events and activities. Sojits Fuso Philippines, the newly appointed general distributor of Fuso trucks and buses, recently held its inauguration at the Philinvest tent in Muntinlupa City. We're inaugurating our new organization, Sojits Fuso Philippines. We are now the uh, appointed distributor of Fuso trucks and buses here in the Philippines. No? Before, uh, Fuso trucks and buses were distributed by Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation. So our company, Sojits Fuso Philippines, is a totally new organization. And our principals, uh, Sojits Corporation, is a major Japanese trading company. And they have been in the Philippines doing automotive business also for uh, more than 50 years. So in, in terms of experience, we have a team that's uh, very experienced in automotive. Operating in the country since 1969, Fuso currently offers a diverse model of trucks and buses ranging from the light-duty Cantor series, medium-duty Fuso FI and FJ, and heavy-duty guises of the Fuso FJ in cargo and rigid configurations. Fuso also offers the Rosa light-duty bus in three different seating capacities. Sojits Fuso Philippines Corporation says they will remain passionate and committed in growing the brand and the business to further serve its Filipino customers. Suzuki Philippines announced that it wrapped up the first quarter of the year with consistent sales growth, securing the sixth spot in the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines Incorporated roster. According to Suzuki, the Ortiga remains the brand's best-selling vehicle, accounting for 33% of the total sales for the quarter. The Solerio came in second with 12.3% of sales, while the Desire contributed 116 In addition, Suzuki says its performance this quarter is a continuation to a successful 2018, which marks strong sales, expansion in key cities across the country, and back-to-back -back recognitions from several renowned award-giving bodies. Auto Italia Philippines recently launched the Piaggio Ape three-wheel diesel model and the Piaggio Porter 1000. According to the company, this is their way of bringing in business solutions to the market. Piaggio Ape now with three new models namely the Piaggio Ape Auto DX, Ape Extra LDX, Piaggio Ape Auto DAC, and a wide range of customization options, it allows small-scale businesses to have a better platform. The Ape three-wheeler packs a single-cylinder naturally aspirated direct injection four-stroke 435cc diesel engine. It's also Euro 4 compliant and classified as a non-polluting vehicle. 
Meanwhile, the Piaggio Porter 1000 is a four-wheeler that combines the toughness of a truck with the size of a city car, making it a handy solution for cargo while efficiently using space. The Porter's front engine and rear-wheel drive allow to maximize its load capacity. It's also Euro 4 compliant with a top speed of 70 km per hour and a low fuel consumption rating of 20 km per liter. We believe that the diesel is the most economical way to go and Piaggio has this unique vehicle for this size because it's not the small size na diesel. No? So since they have it, that, that's an, an added plus where other competitors do not have. So since Philippines is also a diesel country, we believe that the diesel product will, will sell. Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine, takes another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Motoring Today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just the click away. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's Head to Head, our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category. It's not every day that you see two different popular mid-size SUVs bumper to bumper. In this Head to Head, it's a comparison between the Isuzu Mu X and the Nissan Terra. Two cars that both have garnered support and applause from their respective fans. Watch this. Our first stop, the powertrain of the Isuzu Mu X and the Nissan Terra. The Mu X received a new engine along with other improvements made to it. It is now powered with a new 1.9-liter four-cylinder inline blue-powered turbo diesel engine that gives out 150 PS of power and 350 Nm of torque. These figures are coupled with a six-speed manual transmission. Meanwhile, under the hood of the Terra is a 2.5YD25 DDTi inline four-cylinder diesel engine that is capable of producing 190 horsepower and 450 Nm of torque. It is mated to a seven-speed automatic transmission with manual mode. Let's take a look at the chassis of the two mid-sized SUVs. For the Mu X and Terra suspension setups, they are both comprised of an independent double wishbone and coil spring and stabilizer at the front, though they differ with regard to the back suspension. The Mu X uses a 5-link coil spring and stabilizer bar at the back, while the Terra is equipped with a multi-5-link with stabilizer bar at the rear. They're a bit different, but both cars get a quieter cabin when on the road thanks to these suspension layouts. It's now time to have a tour of the exterior and interior of the Mu X and the Terra. With the overall look of the Mu X, it's obvious that Isuzu wanted it to look more aggressive while bearing a modern design. The front fascia looks bolder with the set of angular bi LED headlamps with auto leveling function and DRL. Meanwhile, the rear is defined by a pair of horizontal rear combi lamps with LED positioning lamps. The entire look of the Mu X is completed by these 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels. On the other hand, the Terra manages to showcase a personality of its own, even though its design follows the Novaris. It adapts the hood, the fenders, and the character lines almost look the same. 
But what defines the Paris exterior are the LED headlamps and styled LED position lamp with auto on and off, and follow me home functions, and the daytime running lights. Moreover, the same with the Mu X. The Terra also powers through on the road with an 18-inch alloy wheel that further adds character to the car. Let's hop in on the respective interiors of our featured mid-size SUVs here. Inside the Mu X, you can spot which areas Isuzu has done slight tweaks. Also for a 7-seater, the Mu X has ample space for everybody to move comfortably. For the seats, our model here is equipped with bucket seats, with back pockets and adjustable headrests in the first row. Meanwhile, the second row, it comes with a 60-40 split folding bench type with center armrests and three adjustable headrests. Third rows get a 50-50 split folding bench type with two adjustable headrests. Sitting at the heart of the Mu X interior is the infotainment system. It comes in an 8-inch touchscreen display that is available with CD, DVD, aux in, USB, MP3, and Bluetooth connectivity. Additionally, audio is enjoyable courtesy of six speakers. Meanwhile, inside the Terra, the seats are wrapped in leather, providing that elegant and cozy vibe all over. Since the Terra is also a 7-seater, the comfort it provides to the passengers is commendable. The driver's seat comes equipped with an 8-way power adjust with power adjust lumbar function, while the second row folds and tumbles in one motion, thanks to the iTouch remote fold and tumble seats. For additional cargo space, the Terra's flat folding seats can easily be configured according to your load, making it flexible and convenient for all kinds of travel. The Terra also has a reliable infotainment system consisting of a 7-inch capacitive touchscreen display audio with seamless smartphone integration, Wi-Fi, tuner, USB, iPod, Bluetooth, Navi-ready app, and video playback functions. Audio is enjoyable through six speakers as well. There's also an 11-inch flip-down rear entertainment system that adds entertainment to road trips. When talking about safety and security, both the Mu X and the Terra come equipped with the necessary features. However, the Terra comes with more advanced technological features compared to the Mu X. The Mu X is equipped with the standard features such as the anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, anti-theft alarm system, reverse camera and rear view mirror, and reverse sensing system among others. On top of that, the Mu X also comes with features that focus on added convenience for the driver and passengers. On the other hand, the Terra comes with an intelligent around view monitor that provides a clear 360 degree view, allowing the driver to park perfectly with ease and avoid obstacles. While the rear parking sensors lend a helping hand with backing up, in addition, there's the intelligent rear view mirror that goes from being a mirror to being a monitor with just a flip of a switch. When turned on, a camera at the rear hatch expands the rear field of vision, helping the driver see around obstructions for a completely unimpeded view. It is also equipped with standard features such as blind spot warning, lane departure warning, and hill start assist. Now we know why these two mid-size SUVs are among the most popular models in the segment right now. Those are the Isuzu Mu X and the Nissan Terra, our featured vehicles in this head-to-head. More about the automobile here in Autofocus as we usher in our segment featuring the autos of the world, spotlighting concept cars as well as newly launched and about to be launched automobile models from around the world. For your exciting viewing on this edition of your automobile electronic magazine, we have the 2020 Hyundai Elantra. Watch this. The 2020 Hyundai Elantra, with a new intelligent variable transmission, improved fuel economy and standard forward collision avoidance assist, once again is the standard in the compact sedan segment. Pricing throughout the lineup delivers consumers a compelling choice, starting at $18,950 for the Elantra SE. The 2020 Elantra arrives in dealer showrooms very soon. Hyundai's new IVT provides superior efficiency and simulates gear shifts from an automatic transmission that customers like. This transmission performs continuous shifts by modulating pressure of the transmission's pulley depending on driving conditions and driver inputs. It utilizes a wide ratio pulley system which provides a broader ratio of operation when compared with its competitors. This allows for improved fuel economy at higher gear ratios and improved performance at lower ratios. As opposed to a more common push belt, the IVT takes advantage of a chain belt, a world's first in the compact car segment. A chain improves fuel efficiency by an additional 1.2% when compared with conventional belt systems. Hyundai's new shift control strategy used by the IVT improves linearity between driver inputs, vehicle behavior, and acceleration. 
Shift response is enhanced, allowing it to closely replicate automatic transmission step shifts. The Elantra features two engine options that focus on fuel efficiency, and a third engine option in the Elantra Sport model. The SC, SCL, Value Edition, and Limited offer the 2.0L MPI Atkinson cycle engine with 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, and Eco offers the 1.4 liter Turbo GDI with 128 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. The Eco model achieves an EPA estimated 36 miles per gallon combined fuel economy rating thanks to a 7 speed dual clutch transmission. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back to Autofocus. Our special feature is next. For this special feature, it's all about Speedlab, a one-stop service shop that caters to every car enthusiast's needs. From engine tuning, suspension modification, general maintenance, and other services, Speedlab got you covered. Learn more about it here on Special Feature. visited Speed Lab located in Quezon City to see firsthand how the service shop does reflashing cars. Reflashing is a technique that puts additional horsepower to the existing program of the car. Once there's more power and torque, Speed Lab noted that there will be 8% to 12% better mileage. We have Mr. Sidney Ang, owner of Speed Lab, to further take us to the process. When you hear the term ECU reflash, it basically means that you are getting the data from the stock computer box it's a file, usually around 1 MB or 2 MB, then changing the values inside, then reflashing it back inside, just like a USB flash drive, the little stick that you have that you can buy anywhere. That's where the term reflash comes from. The other term is actually remapping. Why? Because when you open up that 1 or 2 MB file, it looks like a big Excel sheet. There are a lot of these Excel sheets and they are called maps. Some maps control the fuel, some maps control the ignition timing, some maps control the boost. And on this Montero, we're actually calibrating the map that controls fuel rail pressure, uh, mass airflow sensor, and then throttle accelerator. The first step when reflashing a car is to connect a laptop to the car through the OBD2 port using a flash drive. It will then start reading data from the ECU using specific software. Once finished reading the data, the computer will show all the maps pertaining to how the current engine of the car is performing. This thing is called a map. This, has, this map is, relates to how much rail pressure do we want. This other map is what's the maximum limit that we want the fuel rail pressure to be. And so by adjusting these numbers, making it higher, we actually get more power out of it. Then this is uh, called a torque request map. So for every RPM there, and for every fuel delivery, there is a certain value 
that's arbitrary called torque. This is the maximum torque that engine will give. So if you want more, you just simply again, increase the number. Then the engine will respond by saying that, hey, I, you want more torque now? We'll give you more torque equal to this value. After setting the power and torque to the desired value, Speedlab proceeds to transfer the altered data back to the ECU of the car. However, Mr. Ang noted that before a car could be reflashed, it needs to undergo a baseline dynamometer first, which determines the stock numbers of the car. This step is vital as it tells you whether you're putting in the right numbers or not. It's very important that you have a baseline dyno so you have numbers to work with because we can just plug in a bunch of numbers here and yes, it will be more powerful, but how much power, you don't really know. So we will know what your stock numbers are and more importantly, if you're making the correct numbers, particularly horsepower, torque, and then for diesel cars, boost. If any of these things are off, we will know and you have to fix it first before you do the reflash. Here's a demo straight from Speedlab. Here we are putting the car on a dynamometer or dyno for short, which is basically this thing. This will attach to the rear wheel to measure the actual horsepower that gets to the wheel. That's why you will also see things like WHP, which means wheel horsepower. And this is it. Mr. Ang also clarifies the difference between tune-up and tuning. All concurrent cars with ECUs basically self-tune themselves, meaning that inside the ECU there is a set target for what the air-fuel ratio is, and then the ECU will try to do everything to hit that target. So the old days of fiddling with the carburetor and the distributor for the timing, that's all gone. It's all done by the computer now. After the data transfer, the car will be checked through the dyno machine once again to check how much power the car has actually gained from the reflashing and to see if it was able to reach the desired value. The numbers could be adjusted until the desired value has been reached. Basically, that's the whole reflash process. Take the file, change the contents, re-upload the file, and as you can see, almost 40 horses more. And the big thing is 90 foot-pounds of torque. According to Speedlab, reflashing doesn't do damage to the car. Plus, it has its own benefits. Reflash is one of those things that does not void warranty. And this might be a stingy topic, but here's the thing. In reflashing, you are not changing anything. You are not adding anything. There's no additional hardware. There's not even additional software. The operating system inside that physical chip of your ECU stays the same. The file name stays the same. What we're only doing is changing the contents of the file inside. We're changing from a number 5 to a number 7. So, reflash theoretically does not void a warranty of any kind. However, not all cars can be reflashed. For certain car models that cannot be reflashed, Speedlab uses the unit chip, a universal module that works on any car, any brand, gas or diesel. For that, we have unit chip. The, um, the main difference is with unit chip, you're buying hardware to be able to talk to the ECU instead of just sticking this directly to the car. You have to have a something to intercede between you and the stock computer. So that's what the Unichip does. And that allows us also to do the same process, the same tuning that can be done. So it's still basically manipulation of numbers. But only Unichip is doing the manipulation of numbers to the ECU. We're talking to the Unichip, then the Unichip talks to the ECU to make the changes. So for that, between reflashing and Unichip, we got pretty much every car covered. With the reflash process and the Unichip, Speedlab can tune any car. Check them out on Facebook or visit their shop in Quezon City. Between Reflash and Unichip, we can tune pretty much any car. Whether you have Chinese, American, Japanese, European, Korean, we can do it. So check us out at Speed Lab. You can find us on Facebook. Address is there. We're here in Banawe, Quezon City. So if you want more power, you know who to call. That's all about Speedlab. 
a one-stop service shop that has everything you need when it comes to taking care of your car. Located in Quezon City, our special feature this week. And up next is another exciting feature on Autos of the World. This time around, the 2019 Fiat 500 Star. Let's watch this. The Fiat 500 range has received a stylish update for summer, including the addition of two new versions, Star and Rockstar, to the top of the iconic city cars range. The new models are available in both hatchback and cabriolet guise, while all 500 models from lounge trip upwards now come with the Uconnect 7-inch HD Live touchscreen radio, which has Apple CarPlay support and is compatible with Android Auto as standard. Inside, with the Star version sees brand new upholstery available in two color combinations, white sand and black, and in the elegant new Matelas finish with techno leather details and Bordeaux embroidered 500 logo. The dashboard until now was only available in matching body color, can now be chosen in one of the two available new shades, matte white or matte Bordeaux. In the center of the dashboard, the digital instruments present standout with the standard 7-inch TFT screen with sat nav. The Fiat 500 Star is available as a hatchback or convertible with a choice of a 1.2-liter 69-horsepower petrol engine with manual or dual logic automatic transmission or the 0.9-liter 85-horsepower petrol twin-air engine with 6-speed manual transmission. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back! We have more cars for you to know and appreciate here in Autofocus as we have our second car review this week. The all-new Toyota RAV4 has made a major comeback since it was first launched in the country 25 years ago. Now with a more powerful engine performance matched with a refreshed design and styling, the all-new RAV4 has quickly made waves following its unveiling. Find out what makes it special in this car review. The all-new Toyota RAV4 embodies Toyota's new global architecture, or the TNGA, the car maker's platform that applies its principles and technologies to improve its lineup of vehicles. With the TNGA, the all-new RAV4 is powered by an enhanced 2.5-liter dynamic force engine with dual VVTi with VVTIE engine. It produces 203 horsepower and 243 nm of torque, a lot higher compared to its predecessor. These figures are mated to an 8-speed direct shift transmission that ensures a quieter cabin. Toyota also did special tuning to the front and rear suspensions of the RAV4, which ensures a supple ride with responsive handling. It features a McPherson strut at the front and a double wishbone at the rear. 
When it comes to the design and styling, the RAV4 showcases a sportier and bolder design. It looks like it's ready for any urban adventure, still thanks to the TNGA. Looking at the exterior of the RAV4, the most noticeable thing would be its cross octagon style, which combines a wide wedge shaped front that links with an octagon shaped spacious and utilitarian rear. Moreover, the RAV4 is now faced with two tiered upper and lower trapezoid shaped grille that houses a set of bold LED headlights. The pumper has been tweaked as well, together with the taillights. On top of that, the RAV4 now features a set of 18-inch aluminum wheels, which has also been redesigned. Continuing, the interior of the RAV4 likewise showcases a bold look while staying elegant. The cabin has been redesigned, featuring a more rugged dashboard, soft touch panels. At the heart of it is a 7-inch multi-information display that supports AM, FM radio, Bluetooth, USB, and AUX connectivity. It also features a smartphone mirror link for Android and Apple. Moreover, the seats are wrapped in leather, providing comfort to the driver and passengers. The driver's seat is 8-way power adjustable that also comes with memory and lumbar support for added comfort and convenience. Additionally, the interior of the RAV4 is further highlighted by seat heaters, rear cooler, and a panoramic moon roof. When it comes to safety and security features, the RAV4 has a number of it since it is under the TNGA. Apart from the standard features, the RAV4 is equipped with 7 airbags, 8 eye front and rear sensors, backup camera, anti-lock brake system with emergency brake signal, and vehicle stability control. All of these advanced features complete the TNGA's purpose and that is to provide an unparalleled peaceful driving experience to Filipinos. all-new 5th generation Toyota RAV4, surely making its comeback worth the wait. And that's Autofocus this week. And on behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, we hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Until next time, this has been Ray Louis Gamboa.